Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for letting me be part of your day, and thank you for tuning in. All right now, my Bible is sitting open to that little four-chapter Old Testament book of Ruth, the romance story of Ruth. My Bible is open to chapter two, if at all possible. Reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there, Ruth. Chapter two, I'll begin to read at verse four here in just a moment, along with your Bible. Get something on which you can jot some notes. We began using three words beginning with the letter E on yesterday's broadcast. We'll complete that. I think it will help you identify some things going on in the passage. So get your Bible and get something on which you can jot some notes. I have a gospel tract in my hand that I'll say more about, but the bottom line is I want to put this gospel tract into your hand and encourage you to be using gospel tracts to further the work of getting the gospel to people. I'll say more about that here in a moment. Not long ago, I was speaking before a group of all men. And at one point, to help me illustrate a point I was making, I asked all the men this question. I said, how many of you men enjoy the Hallmark Channel on television? Well, I got the reaction I expected. All of the men rolled their eyes and groaned. Now, listen, I'm sure somewhere there is a guy who likes the Hallmark Channel, and that's fine, but I think he would be the exception. My wife loves the Hallmark Channel. Me? Well, just give me an old episode of Gunsmoke, please. I'll be fine. Now, all right, you may be asking, what in the world am I doing asking these kind of questions? We're studying a romance story here in Ruth. Now, listen, I want all you men out there to listen. This may be a romance story, but this story beats Hallmark hands down. Every man who knows Christ needs to know that God has given us the story of Ruth so that we men can talk intelligently to other people on the subject of honest biblical romance. This story was not written by Hollywood writers. This one tells an actual story of how a real romance happened, and it happened for God's glory and for God's purposes. And in this story, the guy gets it right. For that purpose alone, we guys got to get this story down pat. Get your Bible and join me, please, in the book of Ruth chapter 2. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And as my announcer said, this radio broadcast is the radio arm of a larger ministry where we publish gospel tracts in different languages and give them away all over the world. And I want to put into your hand a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English tracts. And to do that, you'll need to give us your name and address. And to do that, my announcer will give our contact information at the end of the program. But one of the tracks that's in that sample packet is this one entitled Infant Baptism. It's a question. Infant Baptism, what does the Bible say? And when you open this gospel tract up, there's only one large, bold word going cockeyed across the page, and that word is nothing. The Bible says nothing about infant baptism, and we put this track out for this simple reason. So many people are trusting their baptism as a baby as the reason why their sins are gone and they'll be allowed into heaven. They're so confused. Salvation is not found in water. Salvation is not found in water, no matter whether you're a baby or you're an old person. Water cannot deal with a sin stain on your soul, and this gospel track will make that clear. Please, it's just one of the many valuable evangelism tools I want to send to you. 
If you cannot wait to the end of the program to listen to our contact information, you can just request the sample packet at our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, if your Bible's in front of you, The book of Ruth, chapter two, beginning at verse four says this, and behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and he said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, it's the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Stop, please, right there. Verses 1 through 7 of Ruth chapter 2 form the first paragraph of the chapter, and this paragraph I have titled by this words, The Work, The Work. It is here that the romance between Ruth and Boaz is going to have its inception. After giving us the actors in verses 1 to 3, we next see the attention, the attention that Boaz is going to pay to Ruth in verses 4 to 7. Yesterday, as I said, I began using three words, all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant. My first word was environment, because in verse 4, we see the godly work environment which Boaz had established between himself and his workers. But as soon as Boaz greets his field workers and they in turn greet him, his eyes, that's my second E word, his eyes are drawn to this gal in the field named Ruth. In verse 5, Boaz asks, who is that damsel? (laughs) Now, we are not told the expression that Boaz used when he said those words to his foreman, but it appears that the foreman got the idea that Boaz had more than just a casual interest in this gal named Ruth. So he, third word beginning with the letter E, he educates Boaz. Again, the word education is my third E word here. I begin this broadcast by challenging all of us men to pay attention. And I want us to pay attention to this romance story. And right here is the place that us guys need to get it. Now, listen, Boaz, as he begins to have an interest in Ruth, he does not lead with his hormones. He leads with his head. Notice the three facts which Boaz is educated with by the foreman. He learns about Ruth's past, her permission, and her persistency. Now, before Boaz does anything to pursue a relationship with Ruth, Boaz has his head in gear. He learns something about this woman who has caught his eye. Let's take them one at a time. Now, what about Ruth's past? Well, in verse 6, the foreman here, the foreman over the field workers, he tells Boaz that Ruth is a Gentile. She's not Jewish. She is from Moab. Now, that fact in and of itself had to have made Boaz very cautious. But here, Ruth, she's living now in Israel. Well, why is she there? She's evidently altered her life from being identified with Moab to become identified with the children of Israel. Ruth has altered her spiritual course. That's her past. But what about the permission idea here uh, that the foreman talks about? Well, that's the next thing here. In verse 7, he, the foreman, tells about how Ruth had asked permission to work in this particular field. And again, due to Ruth's Moabite heritage, she had to walk very carefully here among the Jewish people. She did not just assume the right to be able to come in and work and glean in the field. She came with a humble heart in that fact of her character had caught the attention was being reported here by the foreman to Boaz. All right, we've got our past, we've got our permission. Finally, what does the foreman say about the persistency of Ruth? Listen, listen again to the second half of verse seven. Here is what it says. The foreman is talking to Boaz and he says, so she, Ruth, came and hath continued even from the morning until now, 
that she tarried a little in the house. That's how verse 7 ends. Now, those last words, she tarried a little in the house, means that she rested only for a very brief moment during that workday thus far. I really find it interesting that the foreman and probably everybody else in the field had been watching Ruth all morning long. They were watching her work ethic. They were watching her character. The work ethic of this Moabite woman impressed the socks off of them, and this fact is passed on to Boaz. Again, I remind us all that in this romance story given to us by God for our learning, that his story teaches us that our head must be in gear when marriage ideas begin to formulate in our heart and mind. Pardon me for the personal story, but two of our three children are married. Before our two married children ever met their mates, my wife and I had identified the people to whom they got married. Now, I does not mean that we picked their mate out. We didn't do that. But did we see godly character in the lives of those they would eventually get married to? The answer is yes. When our oldest son came, and asked our permission to pursue a certain young lady to get married, he asked my wife and I to pray about this gal. Well, our immediate response to this was, we don't need to pray. We've already prayed and have already decided that if you came and asked our permission to seek her hand in marriage, you would have it. Oh, you should have seen his face. You see, parents are concerned about this kind of stuff, aren't they? Character matters in marriage. My wife and I know that. Oh, is the gal that our son was interested in good-looking? Absolutely. But her character outshone her physical beauty. We saw character, and we had been married long enough to know how valuable character is in a marriage relationship. All right. Here's a practical idea for all of us, guys and gals. If you are married or if you're not married, doesn't matter. But if our character is not what it ought to be in any area, confess it to God. Confess it to God and ask him for his help in replacing our character flaws with Christ-likeness. The great chapter on this is the second half of Ephesians chapter 4. It's where we replace lying with telling the truth. We replace bad things coming out of our mouth with sweet things and and, and building up things. It's where you and I, we begin to act like Christ by replacing character flaws with the character of Christ. That's the passion of Christ in saving us that we be conformed to the image of his son. And friend, marriages need people that are transforming If you're married like I am, I still have some issues that I need to be conforming to the likeness of Christ, and so do you. Let's ask God's help in accomplishing that so that our marriages reflect more boldly the person and the love of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.